Hey, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to bring you through my 2023 ski gear. This is all the gear that I used to ski moguls. This is after 10 plus years of mobile skiing, my first year on World Cups, and my fourth year on national team. This is the best gear that I can think of, the most dialed setup that I can come up with. So yeah, that being said, let's get into some ski gear. Daniel Tanner! So to start off with, I'll start with my skis. This year I'm skiing on the Kessley 178. They are the stiffer Kessley model. They come in two models, the stiff and the softer one. These are the stiffer ones. I've just switched to them about two, three months ago now. And I really enjoy this ski actually. They've been super fun to ski on. And they're super playful ski. And they have a lot of life in them. I find that on the flats, they really like to turn. On the moguls, they really like to turn. Personally, I like the stiffer ski because I find it can help with ski B control when you're slowing down in moguls and it gives you a little bit more control and that is kind of contrary to popular belief especially on my team right now everybody likes soft skis for the most part but personally I like a stiffer ski so I'm skiing on the stiffer Kessleys compared to the competition I would say that the top quarter of the ski is a little bit softer but the rest of the ski is nice and stiff still so I think that's really what makes it super playful because the shape is very similar to other mobile skis out there it doesn't change a whole lot so the main difference that I've noticed is that the flex is a little bit softer in the tip and I really think that's why they're so playful and why they have so much life in them why they like to turn so much and yeah I've been really enjoying the Kessler ski I started skiing on them two weeks before Ruka so I didn't have much time to get used to them and I thought that they were super easy to get used to I didn't have any trouble getting used to them I felt super at home on them within probably a week and then skiing the mogul skiing the Ruka course getting used to that I had no troubles at all I really enjoyed skiing on the Kessler ski Kessler is a old Old school Austrian ski company they've been around for a long time they've been around for a really long time and they are huge into racing they have a lot of racing skis and a lot of history in racing and they're kind of just getting back into mobile skiing again so this I'm super excited to be skiing for Kessley and yeah they're presenting me with a lot of opportunities on and off the hill with skiing and my video work and everything like that so they're, they're a huge supporter and I'm super excited to be skiing on Kessley's this year I really like their motto uh, their motto is skiers ride Kessley which I think really shines through in these skis honestly if you ski on them and you're a skier and you really like a playful ski that likes doing exactly what you want it to do being exactly where you want it to be at all times allowing you to hit all those side jumps turn really quick go really fast do everything you need to do in the moguls um, I think you'll really really enjoy these skis so yeah if you're a if you're a real skier I would highly recommend getting some Kessleys as for the bindings on them this year I'm running the pivot 18s again last time we talked I had just changed over over to Pivot 18s and I've liked them ever since then been skiing on them I was on the 14s before and then moved up to the 18s I know they're making 15s now and they have the full one piece toe piece as well but I'm still a fan of the 18s I ski my dins at around 14 ish so it's not like maxing out the 18s but it's just in a comfortable zone for these bindings yeah I've been a huge fan I haven't had any problems with the Pivot 18s at all huge thanks to Mountain Cultures for getting these skis mounted up they got these ones mounted up this week for me and I'm just heading out on Friday to go to Apex so they got it mounted up pretty quick and yeah they do a great job there at Mountain Cultures so thank you very much for that. For my poles obviously I'm skiing on the zipline podium graphite poles um, they're definitely the best poles around for mobile skiing they're super durable lightweight I like how the grip feels in my hand I've been skiing on these poles for a long time now probably about 10 years I've been skiing on these poles ever since I was back on the Windsport club team here and I've never had an issue with them I highly recommend them if you're skiing moguls I'm skiing on the 102s still. So last time we talked I had just tried out the 102s from 96s and I has kind of stuck with it ever since because they just kind of give you a little bit more upright of a position in the moguls and they're definitely the bright size for me. So the 102 zipline podium graphite poles are my go-to poles for skiing moguls and honestly skiing anything. They're super durable poles so they can take a lot of abuse and yeah I'm a huge fan of these poles. If you want to try something new from zipline they just came out with the hex carbon pole which is a carbon fiber pole that is super lightweight and the actual pole is a hexagon so it's kind of an interesting design kind of a cool idea and uh, they're super lightweight pole they don't have the Kevlar in the pole so they're slightly less durable than the mogul poles but if you want to try something new something lighter I would highly recommend giving these a shot they're a super cool pole and they're really 
really, really light, like surprisingly light. Like whenever I'm skiing with them, I have to double check that the full pole is still there and that I didn't break it because it feels like I got half a pole in my hand and I, I broke it somewhere. But they're just super lightweight poles, so I always find myself touching the ground trying to make sure that I still have a full pole with me. So if you're interested in a super lightweight pole setup, I'd highly recommend giving Zipline Hex Carbon Poles a go. For my boot this year, I'm rocking the full tilt drop kick. This is the last full tilt drop kick that I'll get because full tilt's now turned into K2, but the models have stayed pretty similar. I choose the drop kick because it doesn't have the grip walk on the bottom or the WX Alpine grip walk, whatever it's called. I like it because it keeps it super lightweight. It's just plastic on the bottom, so that saves a little bit of weight in your boot and makes it super lightweight. I obviously really like that the boot is all black. I'm a huge fan of that. This year I got the thinner shim in here. That's not really on purpose. When I was in Ruka, I had the thicker shim in and these boots just kept having the one pop out all the time. If you ski with full tilts a lot, you know that that kind of happens from just the occasional boot and there's nothing really you can do about it. No one really knows why. So I was skiing on one with a thick shim and one with nothing in it for a little while and then I just thought about it one day and I was like, man, I should just meet in the middle, make the, try out these thinner shims. So I put the thin shims in and for some reason they don't fall out these on this boot so they seem to work a lot better I did, haven't noticed a huge difference really like I can obviously tell when the thicker shim is in but I haven't noticed a huge difference in the performance I like the thicker shim for skiing moguls because it keeps you a bit farther forward I like the thinner shim for jumping because you're allowed to able to stand up a little bit straighter on the end of the jump aerialists will actually take out the shims and grind a little bit off of their back so they can get perfectly straight up and down with their boot that doesn't really work for moguls that's just for when they leave the jump they can be perfectly perpendicular fully extending the position they need to be in. That doesn't really work for moguls because you can't get any forward pressure like that and it makes it really hard. So the thicker shim will make it easier in the moguls, thinner shim will make it easier for jumping. Personally, I haven't noticed that much of a difference at all. I've just been skiing with the thinner shim because they actually stay in and I can keep both my boots feeling the exact same. I found it super easy to get used to. I made that change like a week before Ruka, so it was pretty easy for me to get used to. Yeah, so running the thinner shims this year. I've got the World Cup booster straps on here, which are the which are the stiffest booster straps. I'm a huge fan of the booster straps just to keep you locked in a little bit more. I've got a six flex tongue in here this year, which is a little bit softer than usual. But in the past, I've skied a eight flex tongue. But a couple years ago, I switched to six flex just so I can really feel my boots flex in the moguls. Personally, gotten a little bit lighter since then. And I really like to have that feel of the boot flexing in the moguls um, just to help me have that forward pressure and make sure I'm in the right position when I want to be forward. Obviously, I'm rocking the Intuition line. They're the best liners you can possibly put in your ski boots and it will change the game of skiing for you if you don't have them yet. I highly recommend them. I like the stiffer models. These ones are the power wraps I'm skiing with this year so it's one step below the stiffest. I find it helps make your boot a lot more responsive and helps them not break down quite as easily when you're skiing every single day. A softer liner will break in really quick but also break down quicker. So a stiffer liner will take a little bit longer to break in but will not break down as fast and help your boot last a lot longer and with these ones I did not find the break-in process very bad at all all I did with them is, is I stuck the liners in the oven at about hundred degrees as low as the oven will go for about 10 minutes and then I strapped with them in the ski boots strapped them up as tight as I could warm around the house for about 10 minutes and then I went to Chile and started skiing on them in Chile which is at altitude in the spring and if you've ever skied at altitude in the spring you know that it's not the easiest on your feet your feet tend to swell and it makes your feet hurt a lot more so I I went down there with fresh liners and I honestly my feet only hurt for two to three days and before that these boots felt really good and ever since then they felt absolutely perfect so I could not recommend the intuition liners more inside my liners I put some soles in there I find that really helps make them custom to your foot a little bit more gives you a little more arch support and one thing I've noticed over time is I like my soles to be a little bit sticky there are some soles that have a fabric top to them that make your foot be able to slide around a little bit the top of mine are almost rubbery in a way that uh, my foot won't slide around and I find that really helps you get a grip on the bottom of your boot helps you kind of grip with your toes a little bit your foot won't slide it makes you just feel a lot more locked in personally I don't ski with my boots super tight and cranked down I like skiing my boots looser so with that in combination with the sticky sole it really helps me feel my skin
skis a lot more and I really like that feel. Um, I like the feel of not being able to slide around on my boot and being able to grip with my toes, pull my feet back underneath me. It makes it harder to get the boot on. Initially I didn't like it at all because it was so hard to get on but over time I've really grown to like the fact that my soles are sticky. So that's kind of a little tech tip that I would have for you guys is try to find some sticky soles and to really give you that grip to your boot and it just makes you feel really locked into your ski and it makes it feel super natural for you. Yeah, that's that's my boot setup this year. That's what I'm rocking in the moguls. As for my helmet this year, I'm just rocking a generic Smith Maze. Nothing special. I accidentally ordered the model without MIPS, but I would highly recommend getting the model with MIPS just to help protect your head a little bit more. I'm going to be getting a new helmet here pretty soon. I'm definitely going to get the one with MIPS this year and make sure that I order the right one this time. For my goggles, I'm rocking the Zipline XT model. They have a small frame on them and they're a flat lens. They've got the magnetic lenses on and off so they're super easy to switch. I'm a huge fan of these goggles. I really like the flat lens look and this, the little frame I find adds a really nice touch to them. I really like the lens options that they have. They have a bunch of different lenses. Um, this one specifically is a transition lens actually. So when you're inside it's fully clear and you come outside to a day like today where it's pretty sunny out it changes to black. So everything in between and the cloudy and all the different conditions it kind of adjusts through the light. And I haven't heard of any other goggle company doing that really yet so I find that super cool I really like this lens they're like transition lens but they've got yellow lenses clear lenses blackouts mirror lenses rose gold a bunch of different colors the magneticness of the lens is huge for me this last World Cup in France it was the worst conditions for goggles it was like just in the positives it was puking snow it was really foggy and humid out and I had to ended up having to change my goggle lenses in the gate right before dropping and that would not have been possible with any other goggles where I'd have to dick around with the sides, get all the tabs out. With the magnetic lenses, it allowed me to switch last minute right in the gate and it really helped out. It really made that possible for me to have the right lenses in at the right time. I'm a huge fan of the zipline goggles. For my snowsuit, I just rock the Team Canada Anto suit. Nothing special about it. One thing I absolutely hate about these snow pants is that the zipper closes at the bottom. So that means that the zipper is between my knees for the vent and that is one thing that drives me crazy in the moguls because when you're skiing moguls your knees are smashing together sometimes and with the zipper in there it really causes a lot of knee bruising and it ends up hurting a lot over time like the more you ski the worse it gets and the more you smash your knees together the worse the bruises get and you got bruises there already and just the metal zippers in there really cause a lot of problems for me so one thing I do to fix that is I kind of just crack the vent up about an inch two inches and that gets the zipper out of the way which is fine on a warm day but if it's super cold out it kind of sucks having a little bit of a vent opening with a little breeze into your legs but I, just, I need to do it otherwise I get the gnarly knee bruises so that's one thing I really look for in snow pants is that the zippers close at the top one feature in the jacket that I really like is this arm pocket has a goggle wipe in it so whenever it gets super wet out your goggles get foggy or snowy or raining or anything like that you always have a goggle wipe on you and it's super easy to use so I actually use this all the time I find this really helpful probably the best feature of the jacket I would say <laughs> for under my snow pants I rock core shorts every single time I'm skiing I don't ski without core shorts they are a tension short that helps with your proprioception and keeping your muscles engaged longer so they really help protect your knees your hips and your back they help keep your muscles engaged a little bit longer than they would naturally and it helps with the impact I find a huge difference when I'm wearing them especially in the moguls when you're hitting jumps and smashing moguls all day long the impact can really get to your lower back and your knees sometimes but these really help keep your body in good shape. I want to do more of an interview with my physio about these because he's the one that recommended them to me. It was the Team Canada physio named Mark. He's like my most trusted physio I've had to date and he's the one that recommended core shorts to me. I'm going to do more of an interview with him and ask him a bunch of questions about them on what they do more in depth and why but for now they do not cause any sort of dependence like a brace would. If you ski with a brace all the time and then you go to ski without it your body is going to be a little bit more unstable. These shorts don't work like that. You can take them off and you'll be totally fine. They act as kind of a training mechanism for your muscles. They train your muscles to be engaged longer and to help support your knees and back like I said. So yeah, they help with your proprioception it's called. They have a 
couple different models, the 3.0, 1.0, and 2.0. I really like the 3.0, which is their most supportive model. Um, I find that I ski in these ones the most when I'm skiing moguls, but I also change it up and go to the 1.0 as well. If I need a little bit lesser support, say free skiing or something like that. I used to always get in my head about having leggings going into my ski boot. As of recently, I've realized it doesn't matter at all and it's totally fine to have leggings going into your ski boot and you don't feel in the slightest. So on colder days, I'll ski with these core short leggings. On warmer days, I'll ski with just the shorts underneath my snow pants. I would say about 90% of the time I ski with just the shorts because I really like the lightweight setup and the, the freedom of that, I guess you could say. My physio was always super skeptical about the full length leggings because he said that they don't add any extra help. So I'm super excited to see that the core short leggings are literally just the shorts with leggings below it. There's no more tensioning pieces below the short level. So they're super effective. They're super efficient. And there's a bunch of other companies out there that go all the way down. And I've heard multiple times my physio ripped them apart for not really doing anything at all. So I'm really stoked to ski with core shorts and with a company that's really backed by physios and people who know what they're talking about. So if you ever have any lower back or knee pain skiing, I highly recommend trying out core shorts. As for my ski socks, I'm always skiing in descent ski socks underneath my ski boots. They're a compression sock. I personally like really thin socks and the compression socks myself. I find the compression keeps your feet really, really warm. And then the, the thinness just gives you a really good touch on your in your boots still. They make a bunch of different models thicker thinner compression not compression but they're really a game changer these socks honestly I never thought I'd say that about socks but they are the best socks around they will they'll make you want to ski never ski in anything else other than these socks so if you haven't tried descent lab ski socks yet I would highly recommend giving them a go because they'll honestly change the game for you and yeah you won't want to ski in anything else after that I'm also still skiing with my mouth guard this one I got from my orthodontist back in the day I always ski with my mouth guard in it gives me a little bit more confidence when I'm out there skiing moguls. Anytime I'm skiing moguls or jumping, doing tricks, anything like that, I've always got my mouth guard in. Honestly, I feel a little bit naked if I don't have my mouth guard in, so it really helps with my confidence, and it just helps protect against concussions. Concussions are super scary, and I really don't like screwing around with those, so anything I can do to help protect myself against that, I'm super down with, so I'm always skiing with my mouth guard in. For after the hill, I've got these Intuition booties. I would highly recommend these things. They're so sick. They're so comfortable and warm. As soon as you're done with your ski boots, you can take them off, put these ones on, and then you're just kind of, you can walk to the car, go home, drive in them, and they're super nice, super comfortable. They're absolutely awesome. There's not a more comfortable boot out there, so I would highly recommend giving these a shot. They're super nice. So I'm just gonna add in a little piece here because I forgot a couple things. For gloves, I'm skiing with just the Team Canada Eau Claire gloves. Nothing too special there. They're just a thin white glove. White being super key, so it kind of can hide the hands a little bit if you get a little bit erratic in the moment there the white kind of blends against the snow a bit better so white thin gloves on colder days I've got a pair of lobster claws which are these three fingers and then the pointer finger free and the thumb free I really like lobster claws on cold days because you can still get the grabs really nice and I feel like they're a really good mix of warmth and being able to feel your hand still and for my snow pants I've been still rocking this is shoelace suspenders I am a big fan of the shoelace suspenders because they're always in the right spot and your pants can't fall down when you rock a shoelace belt a lot of times it kind of loosens off and you're you can find yourself coming to bottom air with your pants around your ankles and that's always never really the greatest feeling feels like you kind of wasted a run so i'm a huge fan of the shoelace suspenders still still rocking those the last thing is i've always got my gopro in my right pocket that really makes these videos possible makes it possible to just whip it out get a shot at any given time film whatever i want film the boys film some stuff on the t-bar like this always got the gopro in my pocket so yeah that's my ski gear i'll play a little edit of it all now Trying to make it all make sense. Uh, as you hypothesize on how to monetize and take advantage of all the time we fall behind, get lost in this aquarium. Gone. America, the standard of vanity when the camera's up, we become celebrities, distract from the hysteria. Blind. Confessions that I have a curiosity about life and death. Most of us will never understand it, we just like the quest like Read about the, the meanings of dreaming and all its messages Sedatives that take me to God, witnesses, fetishes We all in search for substance, that's drugs for pain and numbness Circumstances advancing the second chance for this beloved Wish I could tell you that I didn't see this coming But I'm ready for it all to end 
die before tomorrow's trend Your life it all depends on dollars spent Knowledge gained, thought this on the brain Lost inside forgotten days Life it works in such mysterious ways All these years that I pray Hope you hear what I say hey. I'm wearing a blindfold Like where did the time go? I know you hear me out there Give me a sign, no I'ma follow you wherever your mind go Baby, I'ma follow you wherever your mind go Take me away, girl Someone that won't be Hold me closely So that we don't speak take the opportunity to talk about something I'm really excited about offering and that is that I'm finally offering some online coaching I've always wanted to offer something like this but I've never really figured out the way to do it but some of my fellow mobile skiers named Ryan Tam and his business partner figured out the way to do it and they came up with a platform called Mastify this gives you guys access to World Cup mobile skiers Olympic mobile skiers there's a whole bunch of us on there all the best skiers in the world so if you ever want to be coached moguls by somebody like me or some of the best mobile skiers in the world now's your opportunity opportunity I'll link down below the link to my personal page where you can find my availability a little write-up about me and you can book times with me so if you've ever been interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching this is a great opportunity I'm super excited to be a part of it I'm super excited to be offering this to you guys and giving you guys a chance to get a little bit of extra coaching if you've ever been interested in like turn technique air technique what I think about in contests my mental prep the things I do physically to warm up my theories on physical fitness and how it relates to skiing moguls. I'll gladly talk about all this stuff with you. So if the, any of that interests you, check out the link to the ma to my Mastify down below. Down below, I'll also put the link to all my ski gear. So if you're interested in my liners, boots, poles, skis, core shorts, descent socks, interested about what they're about, check the links down below and for more information. And if you have any questions at all, please comment down below. I'm more than happy to help out with any questions you have, whether it's about my gear or your personal gear. I'm always there. I'm I'm glad to help so comment down below any questions and that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed that one and i'll catch you on the next one danny 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 danny